Australia is moving away from coal at an incredibly fast rate. In fact, it's now moving away faster than any other nation on the planet when it comes to first world countries, that is. However, there's still big problems. The price of energy in coal dependent states in Australia is ridiculously high. And here is why. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to see you. My name's Sam Evans, and I'm coming to you from Bangkok in Thailand. You're wondering what on earth you're doing there. Well, if you're new to the channel, that is the reason I'm here. It's because my wife's doing cancer treatment here. And it's up and down. You know, you have your good weeks, your bad weeks. Last few days have been a bit of a tough few days for her. She's been in a lot of pain. She's been on morphine. So hopefully she'll come out of that soon. Australia's most coal-dependent states missed out on the benefits of the growth in wind and solar in the December quarter with wholesale prices in Queensland and New South Wales state grids at record highs and double that of their southern neighbours. Double the wholesale price. That is ridiculous. However, it doesn't include places like Canberra, where electricity is very cheap. Why? Because it's pretty much all renewable energy. Their grid is all renewable. The latest quarterly energy dynamics report from the Australian energy market operator highlights a widening of the north side divide. Despite the lowest output of coal generation since the national electricity market was created and the lowest amount of gas generation since 2004, AMO or AEMO says the price spikes in the coal dependent states were largely because of widespread outages at aging and increasingly unreliable coal plants and significantly higher prices demanded by black coal generators who shifted most of their output to prices well above $1 per megawatt hour. Well above $100 per megawatt hour. If you've got solar on your house or you've got wind turbines, well, this video is barely relevant to you. You're getting around all of this. Fortunately, Australian households are adopting solar at a faster rate than any other country on earth, which is really, really positive news. But part of that is driven by the fact that solar here is cheaper than any other place on earth. However, the price in the Eastern states is still quite high for our electricity. So much so that the average price paid in Queensland in the December quarter was $120 per megawatt hour and in New South Wales, $116 per megawatt hour, while in Victoria and South Australia, it was $63. Victoria and South Australia, the price is half. This is ridiculous. I mean, we have way more sun, right, in New South Wales and Queensland than we get in Victoria. And the price of electricity is double in those two states. Fortunately, this will change drastically this year as more and more solar comes online and as we move away from coal power stations. But the truth is here, the problem is not renewable energy. The problem is Unfortunately, coal and gas power. That is what has spiked the prices. Coal output was cut to its lowest levels on record and was hit hard by rooftop solar in the middle of the day. But when it did generate, it demanded top dollar. So what's going on here? Why are they charging more for these coal power plants, which is driving the prices up? Well, the reason is because they're not running efficiently. When a coal power plant runs inefficiently, it has to try and make the money somewhere else in order to cover those losses they've made. Coal power plants, if they don't run at a minimum of 70% generation, then they lose money. Therefore, they have to spike the prices. This problem will not be fixed. It won't be fixed really essentially for a number of years. The main way for you to fix it is to get solar and batteries. Batteries now are much cheaper. I made a video about the massive reduction in the cost of Tesla's power walls. Tesla's power walls are not the only option. You can get a BYD power wall as well. I'll put a link in the description to the videos I've made about both of them. The graph here from reneweconomy.com.au highlights the dramatic changes that have occurred in wholesale prices over the last few years, where higher levels of renewables have helped South Australia avoid the worst of the fossil fuel impacts. However, it wasn't, that's not the full picture. High levels of renewables in combination with battery storage is what has been the true answer. But it's not only battery storage. You need the right software to make that battery storage work correctly. Unfortunately, Tesla's big battery in Adelaide has been a huge generator of driving down the costs in that state. 
Victoria also benefits from higher renewables and the fact that its brown coal generators are lower cost, but also much worse for pollution. The December QED highlights the rapidly changing nature of the national grid, with renewables taking a record 40.2% share in the quarter, a 4.5% rise from the previous year. However, over the previous three months, as in January, February, and March, renewables took an even higher share in Australia. The growth was led by a 409 megawatt increase in the average output and a 645 megawatt increase in the average output of large scale wind and solar, with black coal falling by 798 megawatts to its lowest level on record. Brown coal fell by 128 megawatts. Coal is dying and it's trying to claw the last profits it possibly can before it becomes extinct. Gas also declined by an average 93 megawatts to its lowest level in 18 years, and hydro was also slightly down. On a daily basis, the changes look even more dramatic, with wind and solar, including rooftop PV, adding an average of 2 gigawatts in the middle of the day. Conventional sources, particularly coal, were displaced. This displacement of coal will continue. By 2030, there will probably be no coal left in Australia. Why? Because it's just incredibly inefficient to run a coal power station. Not just because of the environmental damage caused by coal, but also because of the economic insanity of it. In comparison to renewables, it's now incredibly expensive. Why do I say that? Well, because this year, the price of solar panels has come down 30% versus last year, which is ridiculous. However, the price of the minerals used to make the solar panels has now come down by 57% on average. There is a price war between the three biggest solar panel manufacturers in China. They're willing to reduce prices in order to beat each other. Sort of a race to the bottom of sorts. Now, it is the best time in human history to install solar panels on your home. If you don't have them, you should get them. If you've got an electric car, I highly recommend you make that choice. Now, if you if you live in a rented property, you know, maybe you could come to some sort of agreement with your landlord. Tell them, show them how good it is. You know, Call some suppliers, get a price from them. Tell your landlord, look, look, here's the price. That's my suggestion anyway. They'll start to realize, well, I can save a lot of money here. What are your thoughts on this? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.